Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here today, and you should be too, especially today. Because we're going to do something weird. Er, I guess. Anyhow, I was told by several people that you can get anything at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, you pretty much can. And I wondered, I wonder if you can get everything you need to cut and polish a rock at the Dollar Tree. And the only way to find out was to go and look. And today, we're going to polish a rock using nothing but stuff we got at the Dollar Tree. So, here is basically all you need to polish stones from the Dollar Tree, including the stones. So, let's look at what we got. We needed a pan, which we got. We needed some sort of highly abrasive stone for the shaping, which we got. We needed stones, which we got. We need sandpaper for shaping and pre-polishing, which we got. We got toothpaste, which should polish it, I guess. Because it's whitening, too, in case the stone's white. So if it polishes your teeth, it should polish a stone and felt. And a few incidental things that I don't have right here unpacked. Well, it's already unpacked. Let's put it that way. So if we are going to do this, let's put this stuff off to the side. First thing we got to do is choose our rock. Scissors to open the bag, which also came from the Dollar Tree. Imagine that. Like I said, some of the things actually, actually, I do get a lot of stuff at the Dollar Tree, and this is one of them. So let's take a look at what for stones we got here. Yeah, let's dump a ball out because why not? Because now we got a mess. So we've got a Nice pile of decorative stones. Wow, there is a lot of decorative stones in here. Right off the bat, here's one that looks very promising. We shall put that beside the pink chicken of maybe. There's a stone that looks promising. We'll just pull, hey, there's a piece of glass. That could even be promising. Okay, let's just take a quick look through all of these little tiny, teeny tiny, weeny whiny little walks. Here's one. Let's use the spray bottle of Destiny, which, guess what? This came from the Dollar Tree, too. Okay, that's one that could be promising. There's another. Wow, that's, that's a nice one. That could be a promising one. We'll just pick a few out here and then decide which one of the few we're going to do. And here's a white one. That's just, that one looks promising. We'll just stick with that. All right, and with the magic of editing, we're just going to clean up this mess. Boom. Isn't that remarkable? So here are the stones that I picked out of there. And I threw another one in, and I can't remember which one it was. I think it was this one. It would be, might be a good prospect. So, let's decide which one. This one would be really nice, because it's pretty much, pretty much shaped the way we need it. So that wouldn't really give us a good idea if we can actually shape and make the stone the way we need it. With the materials that we have on hand. This one here is nice. This one would be nice. And of course, this one is partially polished. And this is the one that I threw in there extra. And it has a crack in it. Let me see if it's solid. That's pretty solid. I'm thinking it'd be two good candidates. I'd say about the white one, but 
it's not gonna that one's gonna be sort of easy too so and honestly I think we're gonna go with this one because that's just a little bit bigger these ones I might I'll set them back I may do them for another video so this is the one that we've picked and focus you know it's got that got that crack running down the center which I'm not really concerned about it seems like it's pretty tough but we'll be able to tell a little bit better once we get started so this is going to be our starting stone so to start with what we need is this and this is a sharpening stone for knives apparently a knife because it says blade Pull back the blade, the blade back and forth, grind the blade, refine the blade. Assuming that it's for something made out of steel. Oh my goodness, I can't, fingers aren't working enough to do anything today. Oh my, what kind of freaking... Ah, finally. So this is a sharpening stone. We've got a rough abrasive one and a smoother abrasive one. And we also needed a pan. Because we're going to make a lot of watery mess. And I figured a pan would be a good idea. And since this fits into the pan, that's what we need. Alrighty, so we are going to start with... This stone, and we need a spray bottle. Once again, from the Dollar Tree. The water I did not get from the Dollar Tree, though. I got that from the sink. I know. I hope that doesn't screw up the whole test too much. Too much, but we're making a little bit of a little bit of compromise here. So this is the roughest side. So we are going to spray this down, and. It's instantly dry. Wow. Spray it down again. There's my dry finger. That is instantly dry. Holy smokes. Okay, plan B. More water that is not from the Dollar Tree. Wow, look at that. This is very, very, very porous. Uh, sure, it's not a sponge. Grief. Now, I want that to be wet so that we don't raise the dust or anything. Alrighty, so here's our stone. And say we want to give ourselves a nice, nice shape here. Let's start working this. Okay, let's call this our bottom okay maybe I can get a little bit of water on there now that it's soaked up so the easiest thing to do would be to flatten the bottom so I'm gonna start grinding away on the bottom and already I can see there's a slurry raising up and I'm hoping that it is a slurry made from the stone that we're grinding and not the sharpening stone coming apart Oh, let me get a wipey rag here and let's see if oh my goodness we are starting to that's that's wearing it down that's what we were looking for I'll be darned okay so I've sure I've done some stones this way before on a like a carb carbide stone carborundum stone and you want to like use the entire surface you don't want to just go straight up and down in the middle the whole time or you will grind a flat uh, groove in your sharpening stone. You want to try to use the entire area. That is just good practice. And depending on how long this is, we're going to do it all in real time. Okay, you can see we're nearly got the entire bottom of that flattened out. I am I'm excited. This could be something good here. 
Amazing how that stone sucked the water up. Okay, that didn't take long to get about as much as we're going to get there. So I think, let's make this a round stone. So this part here is going to have to come off. So this will be where the tail is told. If we can grind that into the shape we need. And like I said, I'm going to be working all over the face of this stone. I'll be working the stone all over the stone. And yep, didn't take too long. We got a good bit off of there already. It could take some time. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure. I don't want to chip anything. I am just going to gently run it back and forth all over the face. I could even turn it this way. Oh, that might actually be a little bit easier. The hand motion goes easier this direction, so that might be the way to do it. Okay, as you can see, we're starting to get... That's definitely starting to round off. Hmm. Alrighty, let's take a look. And you can see that is starting to come into a rounded shape. So I'm going to start here. This edge is very thin. So I'm going to start working this edge down a little bit. Like I said, I'm not putting much pressure on this. Just using nice Nice firm strokes down the length of the down the length of the stone. And I'm sort of working it like this as I go about the shaping process. And of course it does slip out of my fingers at times. This is working a little bit better than I thought it would. Of course I really didn't know how it was gonna work. So far, this is, experiment is coming along fairly nicely. Wow, that's doing pretty good. I'm going to start on this one a little bit long, more here. I am very pleased so far. And it doesn't look like the stone is getting worn yet. Then, well, this stone that we're cutting is not exactly, doesn't seem to be very hard. Whatever it is, we shall call it Fred today. It is a piece of Fred. Okay, I think I'm going to start going this way. I'm bringing that shape more into a circle or oval. Because we can. And I don't think this has to be soaking, sopping wet, although it's not going to hurt anything if it is. It will definitely keep the dust down, and that is the that is the most important thing, is we want to keep the dust down. Hmm, that's not bad at all. When I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep this bottom surface 90 degrees to the polish or the cutting stone. It seems to be a good position for the for my hand to do that. I don't know if this way would be better or not. Oh, sorry, chicken. Let's try it again this way. Ah, no, no, it's not. This is more comfortable this way. So let's take a look here. You know, that's pretty darn nice. Hmm. I'm rather impressed. Wow, that's not perfectly circular, but 
that's pretty darn close to it. Close enough that I think we could start shaping the dome. And as we see, we got one edge here that's a little higher than the other. Oh, so, I'm going to start on the high edge and I'm going to start holding that at an angle. And working that edge down. Actually, I could probably do it this way. Yeah, that's doing good. What I don't want to do is get down onto this edge too far here. I can definitely see we're going to need to put this on a stick here shortly. You know what? I may even want to do that right now. As a matter of fact, I think we do. So, the next thing we're going to do is put this on a stick. And, and here's a stick. Now, this stick did not come from the Dollar Tree. But, they did have dowels there. And I wasn't going to buy a pack of dowels just to, just for this video to say that I bought all the stuff from the Dollar Tree because I have some dowels and they have dowels there. And if the Dollar Tree you're at doesn't have dowels, use a pencil. A pencil is just a dowel with graphite in the center. And another thing that they also have at the Dollar Tree is super glue gel. And I got this at the Dollar Tree, not this time, but that's where I get my super glue. And what they also have is lighters. And I'm going to use the lighter to dry this stone off a little bit and hopefully not burn my fingers. Ooh. Another thing they do have at the Dollar Tree is tweezers. Not big ones, but they have tweezers there. So with a lighter, and some tweezers, which you can get at the Dollar Tree. You can dry off your stone, so you can put it on a stick. So, yep, that is very warm. Whew. So, tweezers from the Dollar Tree, lighter from the Dollar Tree, super glue from the Dollar Tree. Wow, the super glue is so good that this cap is stuck on it. Oh. We shall go the other route. So, little daub of super glue. I recommend super glue gel. And, ta -da! we have our stone on our stick, and it is not centered. Wow, did that ever hold on there fast. Okay, our stone is not going. Ah, okay, it's off. <laughs> I definitely want it centered. I shall put the glue on the stick this time. There we go. Now you want to get that stone as centered on your stick as possible. And when the stone is hot, super glue sets pretty quick. So there you go. The stone is pretty much centered on the stick. Now we're going to have to let that dry for a little bit. So, don't go away. Bing, we're back. And the stone is set on there real nice. And it doesn't take a long time for the glue to dry, but you want to give it about, I like to give it about 10 minutes. Go take a break, calm your nerves down. And come back and start on your stone. So we are going to start doing this edge. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier with this stick. Cause I can hold that at about a 45 degree angle and start working that edge down. As a matter of fact, since this is up and I have enough room, you could get a bigger pan so you'd have more room if you wanted to. We can start working that edge rounder by using the stick. But I think first I'm gonna start one just about 45 degree angle and working that edge down. Now this is basically the same technique I use on the 
when my lapidary equipment, the grinding wheels, as I'm holding it at about a 45 degree angle to get that initial initial edge started. Boy, this is hmm, this is actually working out pretty. I, I'm tickled if you can't tell. This is working pretty nicely. And as I'm going this way, at that angle, I'm slowly turning it in my fingers. If you can see what I'm, what I'm getting at there. And we are starting to work that edge down. And to be honest, I think we're almost, almost where we want to be start going over the top and you can see the slurry is raising up and that gives you a good indication that you are actually cutting away the material that you want to cut away I'm I'm really tickled with this there's a lot of elbow grease involved but hey you're cutting your own stones dude or dudette doodling whatever you is now i got this humpy right there so i'm gonna bring this up and i might even hold that like a pencil and i'm up here's 45 degrees here's here's 90 here's 45 i'm holding it between that and working it that way now it may not work that way for you. You, when you're doing this, I think you get a lot of tact, tact, tactile feedback from this. That's working pretty good, holding it like that. I can spin that easier with my two fingers, my finger and my thumb. Okay, you, you'll feel if you do this, you will start to feel. Or you hit a rough spot or you hit a smooth spot or you hit a higher spot or a lower spot it's difficult to explain but it's a lot easier to feel let's take a look here you know i don't want this video to be extremely long but whatever it has to be to get through this entire process that's what it's going to be okay so I'm still turning the stone as I go. It's starting to come into starting to come into shape. You still got a big hump here. So I think I'm gonna start trying to take that across the, the wheel this yeah, the wheel. I'm so used to using a wheel. Taking it across this way, and I'm going in this swooping motion mimicking the shape that I want on the top by taking it across the stone. And if you need to stop every couple couple strokes and take a look at what you got, do that. Let's start with a clean surface. I like clean. I like cleanliness. And we're going to get this roughly shaped and then take it onto the other side of this and try to get it more refinedly shaped. Okay, as you see, we are getting, we're starting to get a dome. We are getting a dome. Zoom in, zoom, zoom in. We're getting a dome. I am pleased. See about oh that shows up better. Look, that dome is darn nice. We got a high spot right here. Let's see if we can hit that a little more with the uh, the movement. Yes, the motion. We shall call it the motion. You can see it's getting a little dry, so we need some undryness stuff that's water's new name undryness stuff 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. There's a low spot right there. But you know what? I think we are going to take this now and try this other side. Okay. Oh, that is a lot. I can feel it is smoother. Whoops. <laughs> I was going to go at that 45 degree angle and maybe hit a little bit of it that way. A couple of turns around. And then start this again. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my gosh, look at that. And look at that from the top. That is pretty darn nice. I think I'm going to hit the edge of this now. I'm going to be dragging that across the edge. A bigger pan, I think, would have really been better for this. Because then I'd have more hand room. Wonder, oh, yeah, look at, oh, look at that. Maybe we don't need a bigger pan. I just need better stone placement. And as I'm coming across, I'm rolling it. And I think that's going to refine our shape a little bit. Let me try this. I'm going to put a very unsteady pencil line. I'm going to put two pencil lines on there so that you can hopefully see how I'm turning this as I go. That might help. I'm hoping the camera picks that up. Okay, let's look down on it and see what the shape looks like. Now that is definitely refining the shape. Focus. How about refining the focus there? So I'm going to go around this again and I'm again I'm spinning it as I go. And refining that dome on the top with this finer finer stone. And look at that. Wow. I think what we can do now is actually move on to the sandpaper. So let me clean this up. We'll get the sandpaper out. Okay? Okay. Here is the sandpaper that they had there. So let's open this up. And I have never used sandpaper from the Dollar Tree before. And what do they say we have here? We've got... Two P80s, two, P, two P240s, two P400s, 10 P80, 100. Okay, what the difference between... Oh, boy. P150. Waterproof abrasive paper. Okay, I thought I saw waterproof. So we've got 400, 240, and 80. Okay, that 80 seems really, really rough. That seems rougher than the stone. So let's try a piece of 240. Okay, we shall set G off to the side here. Now what we need for this is a piece of foam or a towel to cushion it. Okay, and hold on. Okay, I have some foam here. <laughs> this is just foam craft sheet. Okay, I didn't get any of that at the Dollar Tree. But they do sell it at the Dollar Tree. That's And I saw it today. They That's why I didn't get it, because I had some. Of course, it took me 10 minutes to find it. But, uh, anyway. Okay, the reason we have this there is that acts as a cushion, so we can get a better shape to the stone. So let's see how waterproof this is. So, ooh, that's really rough. Okay, I'm going to start by going over this. I may have to get, I may 
have to go to the finer stuff. That seems awfully rough. Well, maybe it's not. It sounds rough, but it's not always rougher than as rough as it sounds. So when you're doing this, I sort of turn it and go in this motion down to that approximately 45 degrees because that's going to start the edge of our setting edge. Okay, I'm doing a combination of the this movement and the 45 degree swirly thingy. When you're doing this, you're going to sort of feel what you need to do. And I'm actually going to take this across that setting edge going this way. Hopefully you can see that the, the two marks I have on there that I'm turning this. Did it start soaking through yet? Nope, it hasn't soaked through yet. I'm rather impressed so far. And I'm turning that and giving that a nice little coming up to 45 degrees. Actually, I'm turning it and coming up from 45 degrees to almost straight up and down. It's been a while since I've done this, so I have to remember how to do it. Once I started doing it, then I remembered how I normally do it. So I'm turning it, turning it, turning it, and bringing it up like this. And there's black all over the stick. So that means that a lot of this is... Okay, we're getting soaked through now. Didn't expect this paper. Ooh! Good. Yuck! Okay. Did they just spray paint it black? Ugh. Okay, let's take a closer look. All right, you know, I'm not seeing facets. And I'm seeing an actually a very... Decent looking dome. Holy smokes. Look at that. I am very tickled with this. I was going to hit that again, but I think not. I think we're going to go up to a finer paper. So I'm going to sort of dry this off. Yeah, that's... Ooh! Okay, it's, it's from the Dollar Tree. I'm not expecting miracles. 240... And here's 400. So, yeah, that feels a little bit smoother. What we're going to do is I'm going to spray this off. Okay. And this is important. If you're going from sandpaper, different grits of sandpaper, especially going finer, you want to clean your stone off. And you can do that by just giving it a couple good sprays with the spray bottle. And the reason we do that is you don't want any of that older grit or the old paper with the rougher grit getting mixed up with this paper, with this grit, because you get one piece of grit in there and it starts swirling around and you get scratches all over the place. And you'll want to use a different rag too. So we're going to do the same thing again. Boy, it feels almost as rough as the other one did. And I'm just going to give this, wow, look how that water is laying on there. I'm going to start at the setting edge and then I'm going to go around to the 45. And I'm going to turn it back, turn it while I'm going back and forth and start bringing that edge up, end up to 90 degrees in a nice little slow motion. And you can see in the slurry that we're taking off material. That's looking pretty nice. That dome is remarkably good yes i say that is remarkably good no we got 100 i doubt this paper would do because it's not wet dry paper so we may just have to stick with that so basically we're done with the sandpaper and this chuck those rags somewhere so what color are we going to use today Something that does not destroy the, or blow out the camera. Maybe we'll do blue. Maybe we'll find something that's closer to the table. That 
Oh yeah, what the heck? We'll use the orange today. Okay, I want a little bit thicker pad, so I'm going to fold this in half. And this is felt. That's all this is, is felt. Actually, I think I'm going to fold it into quarters like that. And it's going to flop open on me. Of course it is. So we will have to deal with that. Okay. Why are you doing this? <laughs> okay, we're using... This is basically what I, the only thing I could think of to polish with. I looked there was for car wax or something like that, and I couldn't find anything that looked like it would be suitable. <sighs> so I'm thinking, toothpaste? Why not? Mmm, and it smells... Wow. That actually smells pretty good. Cleans teeth, freshens breath... And if this works, I can call Colgate and tell them to put on their Icy Blast, Whitening, and Stone Polishing. So let's take a closer look at this. See how close we can get without it. Okay, you can see the reflection of the lights. And there are some tiny scratches on there. This may be where the whole thing falls apart. Actually, I might put a little water on that, too. That's a lot of toothpaste. Yee, yuck. Okay, so for this, we're just going to do that. We're just going to start hitting that thing all over. Because, oh, it's soaking through already. Look at that. Okay, this might actually take a good bit of toothpaste here. Because I got four layers. And it's going to soak through. But we need something that's going to hold like the toothpaste, the polishing medium, in position. And I'll be able to use some, some pressure on that. I think if we're getting the suds going, I think we're actually getting, getting the stuff to where it needs to be. This is totally new territory. Toothpaste polishing. Oh, look at that. We've got foam. It's a rabbit stone. Ah! Hey, we got foam going. That might mean that it's working. And it might mean that I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> I'm polishing a stone with toothpaste. <laughs> it smells good, at least. Oh, and the felt sticking together. Okay, let's <laughs> let's clean this off and see if we got some sort of polish going. I'm gonna actually spray this off first. Find a little dry corner of this. <laughs> okay, and let's take a closer look. And holy smokes, we're getting a polish. We are getting a polish. Look, you can see this the shiny from the lights. Okay, there is undercutting in this stone. If I'd have had some finer sandpaper, I think we would have been able to get rid of that undercutting. But the stone is becoming translucent. You can see down in there. Holy smokes, this is this might actually work. This might actually work. So for the polish polish, it may take a little bit, but I think this is going to work. I mean, if this actually works, I'm going to call Dollar Tree corporate office and say, Hey, guess what? You can polish gemstones using nothing but stuff in your store. And then I will hear the click and the dial tone. Somebody somewhere will be going, weirdo. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, if it's, I don't think it's just me, but that's actually pulling a little bit of a polish. That is pulling a bit of a polish. 
yep there's undercutting in there like right there you can see there's some undercutting but on the top of the undercutting this is pulling a polish that is pretty darn remarkable so i tell you what i am going to set here and i'm going to continue polishing with this for maybe the next 20 minutes and see what happens so i'll see you in about 20 minutes okie dokie change the plan after about 10 minutes of messing around with this i looked at it and i'm like that has more undercutting on it than it did before i went to the sandpaper so I got the got the stone back out and went over it extremely lightly and look at that it took all the undercutting out so I'm thinking the sandpaper did more damage than the stone did but it did shape it more so I took basically went back over it with the finer part of that diamond stone or not diamond stone the uh sharpening stone and now we're going to try polishing it again oh i charge this up a little bit not going to put as much on this time so let's see if we get a better polish without all that undercutting in there now because this is all new to me here i'm using materials i never used and Though I see problems that I realize where the problem came from and I might be able to correct it. Which is cool. This is fun. Okay. And this is a new wipey rag. Okay. Let's take a look now. Holy smokes. Look at that. There's still a little bit of undercutting, but that is... Wow, 10 times better than it was before. If it would focus. Come on, focus. It's not a glass finish, but whoa. It's... It's... Polishing. So I'm going to give this... Yeah, I'm going to give this a few more minutes. And then we'll take it off the stick. And just give it a good look. So don't go away. But look at this. That is not bad. At all. That is pretty darn good. So I'll tell you what. Let's take this. Wow. Now I can't get paper. Ooh, I got toothpaste everywhere. Let's take this off the off the stick and guess where I got this yep okay I'm gonna gently get this stone off last thing I wanted to do is break it and we just got it nearly done there it is ah good okay we got some glue sticking on the bottom yet Need some focus. But there is our our stone. And yeah, I chipped the corner up a little bit, getting it off. I should have had a smaller stick. Because with the stick stick being like this, covered up almost nine probably 90% of the stick, which is gonna make it harder to get off whenever we get it off. So it should have been a smaller stick. Pencil would have worked pr probably pretty good. But all in all, apart from the chip there in the side, that is not bad. That is not bad whatsoever. I think if we would have broken off from the Dollar Tree and got some wet dry sandpaper at Lowe's or Home Depot, something like 1,000 grit or so, 
and went straight from that stone to the, like the thousand grit and then hit it with the with the uh, icy blast I think it would have pulled up a really good polish but using nothing but materials from the dollar store can you polish a stone I think the answer to that is yes and this stone is a win it's a double win So if anybody ever asks where you got your, you know, where you got your lapidary equipment, well, I got it at the Dollar Tree. And they can look at you funny and then you can show them your pretty shinies. But I think that actually would, would work. Say 90% of it you can get at the Dollar Tree. And that was pretty simple materials. You get your glue, tweezers, a lighter, icy blast, scissors, your knife, the little pan, and one of those sharpening stones, and you could be set. And then go splurge on some sandpaper, and you'd be even more set. But hey, there's a project you could do with your kids. Go to the Dollar Tree, pick up a bunch of stuff, and say, we're going to make these stones look shiny. I think that would be some pretty nice family fun so if you like the video hit the button down there subscribe leave some comments in the chat you know down below and i hope you enjoy yourself when you watch the channel that's my that's the biggest thing hope you learn something and you enjoy yourself so thanks for spending some time with me and have a good evening